If you spot jets often, or build scale models of them, you might notice this. This metal rod is called a tail hook, and it helps navy jets land on carriers. That all makes sense. But if you've looked closely at Air Force jets at fuselage, you may have also noticed a tail hook tucked in next to the burners. Do Air Force jets also land on carriers? Or is this another one of those strange Air Force traditions or something? All of that is coming up. Firstly, let's take a look at why Navy jets even have tail hooks. A typical US Navy aircraft carrier has a landing strip length of about 300 feet. This is only about 1 17th the runway an ordinary F-18 Hornet jet needs to make a safe landing. Obviously, making a carrier's landing strip longer isn't an option for many obvious reasons. So, engineers came up with a genius idea, the cross-deck pendant system. Using a few steel cables and a simple hook, a jet could easily land in less than 300 feet of runway. It's pretty obvious how the system works. The pilot lowers his tail hook and makes a regular landing, only making sure to catch one of the arresting cables upon landing. These cables will pull his jet to a stop in the matter of split seconds, and bingo! The jet is stationary. In conclusion, it makes sense for Navy-based aircraft to include tail hooks since they need to land on carriers. But then why do Air Force jets have them too, considering the fact that they're not intended to land on carriers even in emergencies? The answer to that comes down to two reasons. Number one, emergency landings. In the case that the aircraft is having hydraulic leakages, gear malfunctions, brake problems, or other issues that will affect the safety of a landing, the pilot will call cable three times, alerting the tower to prepare the arresting cables on the airstrip. And yes, most runways in the US capable of having a fighter jet land in them will have an arresting cable system. The arresting cables work pretty much the same way a carrier's arresting cables work. The only difference between the two are that a carrier's arresting cables instantly stop a jet. On the other hand, ground airstrip cables only slow down jets and at a much slower rate of speed. The second reason an Air Force jet needs a tail hook is for ground engine tests. Prior to any flight, maintenance crew will conduct several engine tests on a jet to ensure that it's working fine. This will include throttling up the afterburner on the ground. To keep the jet idle on the ground even with the afterburner, the tail hook is lowered and acts like the roots of a tree during a storm. So if Air Force jets do have tail hooks, then why can't they land on carriers? Firstly, Navy and Air Force tail hooks are not the same. While Navy tail hooks nearly reach the ground when lowered, Air Force tail hooks stay about 8 inches off the ground. So it would be very difficult to catch a carrier's arresting cable with an Air Force tail hook. In addition, Air Force jets landing gear are not built to withstand the force of landing on a carrier. If it were to be attempted, the gear would likely dismantle, therefore causing much damage to the jet. The second and most obvious reason is that Air Force pilots are not trained to land on carriers. So even if they had a chance to land on a moving runway without proper landing gear or a proper tail hook, they wouldn't know how to approach or land simply because they aren't trained to do so. And there it is why Air Force jets have tail hooks. If you liked the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. Until next time, we wish you clear skies.